Act One of the Tragedy of Merriam. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragedy of Merriam, the Fair Queen of Jewry, by Elizabeth Carey. The names of the speakers. Herod, King of Judea, read by Bruce Peary. Mariam, read by Libby Gone. Constabarus, read by M. B. Salome, read by Elizabeth Clett. Doris, read by K. Hand. Alexandra, read by Capricia Page. Fedoras, read by Algie Pug. Graphina, read by Abai. Barbas's first son, read by Yulin Demeyer. Barbas's second son read by elizabeth clett ananel read by todd sileas read by lambda sohemus read by david nickel sileas's man read by yule niedermeyer butler read by todd nuntio soldier read by elizabeth clett chorus read by alan mapstone narrated by elizabeth clett Act One, Scene One, Merriam alone. How oft have I, with public voice, run on to censor Rome's last hero for deceit, because he wept when Pompey's life was gone, yet when he lived he thought his name too great. But now I do recant, and Roman lord excuse too rash a judgment in a woman. My sex pleads pardon, pardon then afford mistaking is with us but too too common now do i find by self-experience taught one object yields both grief and joy you wept indeed when on his worth you thought but joy that slaughter did your foe destroy so at his death your eyes true drops did rain whom dead you did not wish alive again when herod lived that is now done to death oft have i wished that i from him were free oft have i wished that he might lose his breath oft have i wished his carcass dead to see then rage and scorn had put my love to flight that love which once on him was firmly set hate hid his true affection from my sight and kept my heart from paying him his debt and blame me not for herod's jealousy had power even constancy itself to change for he by barring me from liberty to shun my ranging taught me first to range but yet too chaste a scholar was my heart to learn to love another than my lord to leave his love my lessons former part i quickly learned the other i abhorred but now his death to memory doth call that tender love that he to Miriam bare, and mine to him. This makes those rivers fall, which by another thought unmoistened are. For Aristobulus, the lowliest youth that ever did in angel shape appear, the cruel Herod was not moved to wrath. Then why grieves Miriam Herod's death to hear? why joy i not the tongue no more shall speak that yielded forth my brother's latest doom but youth and beauty might thy fury break and both in him did ill befit a tomb and worthy grandsire ill did he requite his high ascent alone by thee procured except he murdered thee to free the sprite which still he thought on earth too long immured how happy was it that Sohemus mind was moved to pity my distressed estate might herod's life a trusty servant find my death to his had been unseparate these thoughts have power his death to make me bear nay more to wish the news may firmly hold yet cannot this repulse some falling tear that will against my will some grief unfold and more i owe him for his love to me the deepest love that ever yet was seen yet had i rather much a milkmaid be than be the monarch of judea's queen 
it was for naught but love he wished his ends might to my death but the vaunt courier prove but i had rather still be foe than friend to him that saves for hate and kills for love hard-hearted Miriam, at thy discontent what floods of tears have drenched his manly face how canst thou then so faintly now lament thy truest lover's death a death's disgrace ay now mine eyes you do begin to right the wrongs of your admirer and my lord long since you should have put your smiles to flight ill doth a widowed eye with joy accord why now methinks the love i bear him then when virgin freedom left me unrestrained doth to my heart begin to creep again my passion now is far from being feigned but tears fly back and hide you in your banks you must not to alexandra be seen for if my moan be spied but little thanks shall Miriam have from that incensed queen. Scene two, Miriam, Alexandra. What mean these tears? My Miriam doth mistake. The news we heard did tell the tyrant's end. What weeps thou for thy brother's murderer's sake? Will e'er white a tear for Herod spend? My curse pursue his breathless trunken spirit base edomite the damned esau's heir must he ere jacob's child the crown inherit must he vile wretch be set in david's chair no david's soul within the bosom placed of our forefather abram was ashamed to see his seat was such a toad disgraced that seat that hath by judas race been famed thou fatal enemy to royal blood did not the murder of my boy suffice to stop thy cruel mouth that gaping stood but must thou dim the mild hyrcanus's eyes my gracious father whose too ready hand did lift this endumion from the dust and he ungrateful caitiff did withstand the man that did in him most friendly trust what kingdom's right could cruel herod claim was he not esau's issue heir of hell then what succession can he have but shame did not his ancestor his birthright sell oh yes he doth from edom's name derive his cruel nature with which blood is fed that made him me of sire and son deprive he ever thirsts for blood and blood is red weeps thou because his love to thee was bent and readst thou love in crimson characters slew he thy friends to work thy heart's content no hate may justly call that action hers he gave the sacred priesthood for thy sake to aristobulus yet doomed him dead before his back the ephod warm could make and ere the mitre settled on his head oh had he given my boy no less than right a double oil should to his forehead bring a double honour shining doubly bright his birth anointed him both priest and king and say my father and my son he slew to royalize by right your prince-born breath was love the cause can Miriam deem it true that Miriam gave commandment for her death i know by fits he showed some signs of love and yet not love but raging lunacy and this his hate to thee may justly prove that sure he hates her canis's family who knows if he unconstant wavering lord his love to doris had renewed again and that he might his bed to her afford perchance he wished that Marian might be slain doris alas her time of love was past those coals were raked in embers long ago in Miriam's love, and she was now disgraced. Nor did I glory in her overthrow. He not a whit his first-born son esteemed, because as well as his he was not mine. My children only for his own he deemed, these boys that did descend from royal line, these did he style his heirs to David's throne. My Alexander, if he live shall sit in the majestic seat of solomon 
to will it so did herod think it fit why who can claim from alexander's brood that gold adorned lion guarded chair was alexander not of david's blood and was not mariam alexander's heir what more than right could herod then bestow and who will think except for more than right he did not raise them for they were not low but born to wear the crown in his despite then send those tears away that are not sent to thee by reason but by passion's power thine eyes to cheer thy cheeks to smile be bent and entertain with joy this happy hour felicity if when she comes she finds a mourning habit and a cheerless look will think she is not welcome to thy mind and so perchance her lodging will not brook oh keep her whilst thou hast her if she go she will not easily return again full many a year i have endured in woe yet still have sued her presence to obtain and did not i to her as present send a table that best art did beautify of two to whom heaven did best feature lend to woo her by winning anthony for when a prince's favour we do crave we first their minions love do seek to win so i that sought felicity to have did with her minion anthony begin with double slight i sought to captivate the warlike lover but i did not write for if my gift had borne but half the rate the roman had been overtaken quite but now he fared like a hungry guest that to some plenteous festival is gone now this now that he deems to eat where best such choice doth make him let them all alone the boy's large forehead first did fairest seem, then glanced his eyes upon my Mariam's cheek, and that without comparison did deem what was in either but he most did like. And thus distracted, either beauty's might within the other's excellence was drowned. Too much delight did bear him from delight, for either's love the others did confound. What if thy portraiture had only gone? His life from Herod Anthony had taken. He would have loved thee and thee alone, And left the brown Egyptian clean forsaken, And Cleopatra then to seek had been So firm a lover of her wanted face. And then great Antonius's fall we had not seen, By her that fled to have him hold the chase. Then Mariam, in a Roman's chariot set, in place of Cleopatra might have shown, a mart of beauties in her visage met, and part in this, that they were all her own. Not to be empress of aspiring Rome would marry him like to Cleopatra live. With purest body will I press my tomb, and wish no favours Antony could give. Let us retire, that we may resolve how to deal in this reversed state. Great are the fairs that we must now resolve, and great affairs must not be taken late. Scene three. Mariam, Alexandra, Salome. More plotting yet. Why, now you have the thing for which so oft you spent your suppliant breath, and Mariam hopes to have another king. Her eyes do sparkle joy for Herod's death. If she desired another king to have, she might before she came in Herod's bed have had her wish. More kings than one did crave for leave to set a crown upon her head. I think with more than reason she laments that she is freed from such a sad annoy. Who ist will weep to part from discontent? And if she joy, she did not cause less joy. You durst not thus have given your tongue the rein if noble Herod still remained in life. Your daughter's betters far, I dare maintain, Might have rejoiced to be my brother's wife. My betters far? Base woman, tis untrue. You scarce have ever my superior seen, For Mariam's servants were as good as you Before she came to be Judea's queen. Now stirs the tongue that is so quickly moved. But more than once your collar have I borne. Your fumish words are sooner said than proved. 
and Salome's reply is only scorn. Scorn those that are for thy companions held. Though I thy brother's face had never seen, my birth, thy baser birth, so far excelled, I had to both of you a princess been. Thou, party Jew and party Endemite, thou mongrel, issued from rejected race, thy ancestors against the heavens did fight, and thou, like them, wilt heavenly birth disgrace. Still twit you me with nothing but birth? What odds betwixt your ancestors and mine? Both born of Adam, both were made of earth, and both did come from holy Abraham's line. I favour thee when nothing else I say. With thy black acts I'll not pollute my breath. Else to thy charge I might full justly lay a shameful life, besides a husband's death. Tis true indeed. I did the plots reveal that passed betwixt your favourites and you. I meant not I a traitor to conceal. Thus Salome your minion Joseph slew. Heaven, dost thou mean this infamy to smother? Let slandered Miriam ope thy closed ear. Self-guilt hath ever been suspicion's mother, and therefore I this speech with patience bear. No, had not Salome's unsteadfast heart in Josephus' stead her constabarus placed, to free herself she had not used the art to slander hapless Miriam for unchaste. Come, Miriam, let us go. It is no boot to let the head content against the foot. Scene four. Salome alone. Lives Salome to get so base a style as foot to the proud Miriam? Herod's spirit in happy time for her endured exile, for did he live she should not miss her merit. But he is dead. And though he were my brother, his death such store of cinders cannot cast my coals of love to quench. For though they smother the flames a while, yet will they out at last. O oh, blessed Arabia, in best climate place, I by the fruit will censure of the tree. Tis not in vain they happy name thou hast, if all Arabians like Sallaeus be. Had not my fate been too too contrary, when I on Constabarus did first gaze, Sallaeus had been object to mine eye, whose looks and personage must all eyes amaze. But now, ill-fated Salome, thy tongue to Constabarus by itself is tied, and now, except I do the Hebrew wrong, I cannot be the fair Arabian's bride. What childish lets are these? Why stand I now on honourable points? Tis long ago since shame was written on my tainted brow, and certain tis that shame is honour's foe. Had I upon my reputation stood, had I affected an unspotted life, Josephus' veins had still been stuffed with blood, and I to him had lived a sober wife. Then had I never cast an eye of love on Constabarus' now detested face. Then had I kept my thoughts without remove, and blushed at motion of the least disgrace. But shame is gone, and honour wiped away, and impudency on my forehead sits. She bids me work my will without delay, and for my will I will employ my wits. He loves. I love. What then can be the cause keeps me from being the Arabian's wife? It is the principles of Moses' laws, for Constabarus still remains in life. If he to me did bear as earnest hate as I to him, for him there were an ease. A separating bill might free his fate from such a yoke that did so much displease. Why should such privilege to man be given? Or given to them, why barred from women, then? Are men than we in greater grace with heaven? Or cannot women hate as well as men? I'll be the custom-breaker, and begin to show my sex the way to freedom's door. And with an offering will I purge my sin. The law was made for none but who were poor. 
If Herod had lived, I might to him accuse my present lord. But for the future's sake, then would I tell the king he did refuse the sons of Babas in his power to take. But now I must divorce him from my bed, that my Sylleus may possess his room. Had I not begged his life, he had been dead. Oh, I curse my tongue, the hinderer of his doom. But then my wandering heart to him was fast, nor did I dream of change. Sylleus said he would be here and see. He comes at last. Had I not named him, longer had he stayed. Scene five. Salome. Sylleus. Well found, fair Salome, Judea's pride. Had they in wisdom found the way to make Sylleus deem him defied by gaining thee a more than precious prey? I have devised the best I can devise. A more imperfect means was never found. But what cares Salome? It doth suffice if our endeavours with their end be crowned. In this our land we have an ancient use, permitted first by our lawgiver's head, who hates his wife, though for no just abuse, may with a bill divorce her from his bed. But in this custom women are not free, yet I for once will rest it. Blame not thou the ill I do, since what I do's for thee, though others blame, Sylleus should allow. Think Salome, Saleath hath the tongue to censure her fair actions. Let my blood bedash my proper bro. For such a wrong, the being yours, you can make even vices good. Arabia, joy, prepare thy earth with green. Thou never happy word indeed till now. Now shall thy ground be trod by beauty's queen. Her foot is destined to depress thy bro. Thou shalt, fair Salome, command as much as if the royal ornament were thine the weakness of arabia's king is such the kingdom is not his so much as mine my mouth is our obadas oracle who thinks not aught but what Sylleus will and thou rare creature asia's miracle shall be to me as it obdas still tis not for glory i thy love accept Judea yields me honour's worthy store. Had not affection in my bosom crept, My native country should my life deplore. Were not Sylleus he with whom I go, I would not change my Palestine for Rome. Much less would I a glorious state to show, Go far to purchase an Arabian tomb. Far be it from Sylleus so to think, I know it is the gratitude requits, the love that is in me, and shall not shrink, till death do sever me from earth's delights. But whist! Methinks the wolf is in our talk. Be gone, Sylleus, who doth here arrive? Oh, tis Constabarus that doth hither walk. I'll find a quarrel, him from me to drive. Farewell. But, were it not for thy command, in his despite, Sylleus here would stand. Scene six. Salome, Constabarus. O oh, Salome, how much you wrong your name, your race, your country, and your husband most! A stranger's private conference is shame. I blush for you, that have your blushing lost. Oft have I found, and found you to my grief, consorted with this base Arabian here. Heaven knows that you have been my comfort chief, that do not now my greater plague appear. Now by the stately carved edifice that on Mount Zion makes so fair a show, and by the altar fit for sacrifice, I love thee more than thou thyself dost know. Oft with a silent sorrow have I heard how ill Judea's mouth doth censure thee, and did I not thine honour much regard? Thou shouldst not be exhorted thus for me. Didst thou but know the worth of honest fame, How much a virtuous woman is esteemed, Thou wouldst like hell eschew deserved shame, And seek to be both chaste and chastely deemed. 
our wisest prince did say and true he said a virtuous woman crowns her husband's head did i for this uprear thy low estate did i for this requital beg thy life that thou hadst forfeited to hapless fate to be such a thankless wretch the wife this hand of mine hath lifted up thy head which many a day ago had fallen full low because the sons of babas are not dead to me thou dost both life and fortune owe you have my patience often exercised yous make my collar keep within the banks yet boast no more but be by me advised a benefit upbraided forfeits thanks i prithee salome dismiss this mood thou dost not know how ill it fits thy place my words were all intended for thy good to raise thine honour and to stop disgrace to stop disgrace take thou no care for me nay do thy worst thy worst i set not by no shame of mine is like to light on thee thy love and admonitions i defy thou shalt no hour longer call me wife thy jealousy procures my hate so deep that i from thee do mean to free my life by a divorcing bill before i sleep uh, are hebrew women now transformed to men why do you not as well our battles fight and wear our armour suffer this and then let all the world be topsy-turvid quite let the fishes graze beasts swim and birds descend let fire burn downwards whilst the earth aspires let winter's heat and summer's cold offend let thistles grow on vines and grapes on briars set us to spin or sow or at the best make us wood hewers water-bearing whites for sacred service let us take no rest use us as joshua did the gibbonites hold on your talk till it be time to end for me i am resolved it shall be so though i be first that to this course do bend i shall not be the last full well i know why then be witness heaven the judge of sins be witness spirits that eschew the dark be witness angels witness cherubins whose semblance sits upon the holy ark be witness earth be witness palestine be witness david's city if my heart did ever merit such an act of thine or if the fault be mine that makes us part since mildest moses friend unto the lord did work his wonders in the land of ham and slew the first-born babes without a sword in sign whereof we eat the holy lamb till now that fourteen hundred years are past since first the law with us hath been in force you are the first and will i hope be last that ever sought her husband to divorce i mean not to be led by precedent my will shall be to me instead of law i fear me much you will too late repent that you have ever lived so void of awe this is solaeus love that makes you thus reverse all order you must next be his but if my thoughts are right the cause discuss in winning you he gains no lasting bliss i was solaeus and not long ago josephus then was constabarus now when you became my friend you proved his foe as now for him you break to me your vow if once i loved you greater is your debt for certain tis that you deserved it not and undeserved love we soon forget and therefore that to me can be no blot but now fare ill my once beloved lord yet never more beloved than now aboard exit salome yet constabarus biddeth thee farewell farewell light creature heaven forgive thy sin my prophesying spirit doth foretell thy wavering thoughts do yet but new begin yet i have better escaped than joseph did but if our herod's death had been delayed the valiant use that i so long have hid had been by her and i for them betrayed therefore in happy hour did caesar give the fatal blow to wanton antony for had he lived our herod then should live but great antonius death made herod die 
had he enjoyed his breath not i alone had been in danger of a deadly fall but mariam had the way of peril gone though by the tyrant most beloved of all the sweet-faced mariam as free from guilt as heaven from spots yet had her lord come back her purest blood had been unjustly spilt and salome it was would work her rack though all judea yield her innocent she often hath been near to punishment exit chorus those minds that wholly dote upon delight except they only joy in inward good still hope at last to hop upon the right and so from sand they leap in loathsome mud fond wretches seeking what they cannot find for no content attends a wavering mind if wealth they do desire and wealth attain then wondrous fain would they to honour leap if mean degree they do in honour gain they would but wish a little higher step thus step to step and wealth to wealth they add yet cannot all their plenty make them glad yet oft we see that some in humble state are cheerful pleasant happy and content when those indeed that are of higher state with vain additions do their thoughts torment the one would to his mind his fortune bind the other to his fortune frames his mind to wish variety is sign of grief for if you like your state as now it is why should an alteration bring relief nay change would then be feared as loss of bliss that man is only happy in his fate that is delighted in a settled state still mariam wished she from her lord were free for expectation of variety yet now she sees her wishes prosperous be she grieves because her lord so soon did die who can those vast imaginations feed where in a property contempt doth breed were herod now perchance to live again she would again as much be grieved at that all that she may she ever doth disdain her wishes guide her to she knows not what and sad must be their looks their honour sour that care for nothing being in their power end of act one Act Two of the Tragedy of Merriam. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tragedy of Merriam, The Fair Queen of Jewry, by Elizabeth Carey. Act Two, Scene One. Ferroras and Graffina. Tis true, Graffina, now the time draws nigh, wherein the holy priest, with hallowed rite, the happy long desired knot shall tie feralas and graffina to unite how oft have i with lifted hands implored this blessed hour till now implored in vain which hath my wished liberty restored and made my subject self my own again thy love fair maid upon mine eye doth sit whose nature hot doth dry the moisture all which were in nature and in reason fit for my monarchal brother's death to fall had herod lived he would have plucked my hand from fair graffina's palm perforce and tied the same in hateful and despised band for i had had a baby to my bride scarce can her infant tongue with easy voice her name distinguish to another's ear yet had he lived his power and not my choice had made me solemnly the contract swear have i not cause in such a change to joy what though she be my niece a princess born near bloods without respect high birth a toy since love can teach us blood and kindred scorn what booted it that he did raise my head to be his realm's co-partner kingdom's mate 
withal he kept grafina from my bed more wished by me than thrice judea's state oh could he not be skilful judge in love that doted so upon his mariam's face he for his passion doris did remove i needed not a lawful wife displace it could not be but he had power to judge but he that never grudged a kingdom's share this well-known happiness to me did grudge and meant to be therein without compare else had i been his equal in love's host for though the diadem on mariam's head corrupt the vulgar judgments i will boast grafina's brows as white her cheeks as red why speak'st thou not fair creature move thy tongue for silence is a sign of discontent it were to both our loves too great a wrong if now this hour do find thee sadly bent mistake me not my lord too oft have i desired this time to come with winged feet to be enwrapped with grief when tis too nigh you know my wishes ever yours did meet if i be silent tis no more but fear that i should say too little when i speak but since you will my imperfections bear in spite of doubt i will my silence break yet might amazement tie my moving tongue but that i know before ferora's mind i have admired your affection long and cannot yet therein a reason find your hand hath lifted me from lowest state to highest eminency wondrous grace and me your handmaid have you made your mate though all but you alone do count me base you have preserved me pure at my request though you so weak a vassal might constrain to yield to your high will then last not best in my respect a princess you disdain then need not all these favours study crave to be requited by a simple maid and study still you know must silence have then be my cause for silence justly weighed but study cannot boot not i requite except your lowly handmaid's steadfast love and fast obedience may your mind delight i will not promise more than i can prove that study needs not let grafina smile and i desire no greater recompense i cannot vaunt me in a glorious style nor show my love in far-fetched eloquence but this believe me never herod's heart hath held his prince-born beauty famed wife in nearer place than thou fair virgin art to him that holds the glory of his life should herod's body leave the sepulchre and entertain the severed ghost again he should not be my nuptial hinderer except he hindered it with dying pain come fair grafina let us go in state this wish endeared time to celebrate Axiant. scene two constabarus and Barbus's sons now valiant friend you have our lives redeemed which lives as saved by you to you adieu command and you shall see yourself esteemed our lives and liberties belong to you tis twice six years with hazard of your life you have concealed us from the tyrant's sword the cruel herod's sister were your wife you durst in scorn of fear disgrace afford in recompense we know not what to say a poor reward were thanks for such a merit our truest friendship at your feet we lay the best requital to a noble spirit oh how you wrong our friendship valiant youth with friends there is not such a word as debt where amity is tied with bond of truth all benefits are there in common set then is the golden age with them renewed all names of properties are banished quite division and distinction are eschewed each hath to what belongs to others right and tis not sure so full a benefit freely to give as freely to require a bounteous act hath to glory following it they cause the glory that the act desire all friendship should the pattern imitate of jesse's son and valiant jonathan for neither sovereigns nor fathers hate a friendship fixed on virtue sever can too much of this tis written in the heart 
and needs no amplifying with the tongue now may you from your living tomb depart where herod's life hath kept you over long too great an injury to a noble mind to be quick buried you had purchased fame some years ago but that you were confined while thousands meaner did advance their name your best of life the prime of all your years your time of action is from you bereft twelve winters have you overpassed in fears yet if you use it well enough is left and who can doubt but you will use it well the sons of babas have it by descent in all their thoughts each action to excel boldly to act and wisely to invent had it not like the hateful cuckoo been whose riper age his infant nurse doth kill so long we had not kept ourselves unseen but constabarus safely crossed our will for had the tyrant fixed his cruel eye on our concealed faces wrath had swayed his justice so that he had forced us die and dearer price than life we should have paid for you our truest friend had fallen with us and we much like a house on pillars set had clean depressed our prop and therefore thus our ready will with our concealment met but now that you fair lord are dangerless the sons of babas shall their rigour show and prove it was not baseness did oppress our hearts so long but honour kept them low yet do i fear this tale of herod's death at last will prove a very tale indeed it gives me strongly in my mind his breath will be preserved to make a number bleed i wish not therefore to be set at large yet peril to myself i do not fear let us for some days longer be your charge till we of herod's state the truth do hear what art thou turned a coward noble youth that thou beginst to doubt undoubted truth were it my brother's tongue that cast this doubt i from his heart would have the question out with this confession but tis you my lord against whose head i must not lift a sword i am so tied in gratitude believe you have no cause to take it ill if any word of mine your heart did grieve the word dissented from the speaker's will i know it was not fear the doubt begun but rather valour and your care of me a coward could not be your father's son yet know i doubts unnecessary be for who can think that in antonius fall herod his bosom friend should scape unbruised then caesar we might thee an idiot call if thou by him shouldst be so far abused lord constabarus let me tell you this upon submission caesar will forgive and therefore though the tyrant did amiss it may fall out that he will let him live not many years agone it is since i directed thither by my father's care in famous rome for twice twelve months did lie my life from hebrews cruelty to spare there though i were but yet of boyish age i bent mine eye to mark mine ears to hear where i did see octavius then a page when first he did to julius's sight appear methought i saw such mildness in his face and such a sweetness in his looks did grow with all commixed with so majestic grace his physnomy his fortune did foreshow for this i am indebted to mine eye but then mine ear received more evidence by that i knew his love to clemency how he with hottest collar could dispense but we have more than barely heard the news it hath been twice confirmed and though some tongue might be so false with false report to abuse a false report hath never lasted long but be it so that herod have his life concealment would not then a whit avail for certain tis that she that was my wife would not to set her accusation fail and therefore now as good the venture give and free ourselves from blot of cowardice as show a pitiful desire to live for who can pity but they must despise i yield but to necessity i yield i dare upon this doubt engage mine arm that herod shall again this kingdom wield 
when proof is death to be a false alarm. I doubt it, too. God grant it be an error. Tis best without a cause to be in terror. And rather had I, though my soul be mine, my soul should lie than prove a true divine. Come, come, let fear go seek a dastard's nest. Undaunted courage lies in a noble breast. Axiant. Scene three. Doris and Antipater. You royal buildings bow your lofty side, and scope to her that is by right your queen. Let your humility upbraid the pride of those in whom no due respect is seen. Nine times have we with trumpets haughty sound, and banishing sour leaven from our taste, observed the feast that takes the fruit from ground. Since I, fair city, did behold thee last, so long it is since Miriam's purer cheek did rob from mine the glory, and so long since I returned my native town to seek. And with me nothing but this sense of wrong, and thee, my boy, whose birth, though great it were, yet have thy after fortunes proved but poor. When thou wert born, how little did I fear thou shouldst be thrust from forth thy father's door. Art thou not Herod's right-begotten son? Was not the hapless Doris Herod's wife? Yes, ere he had the Hebrew kingdom won, I was companion to his private life. Was I not fair enough to be a queen? Why, ere thou wert to me false monarch tied, my lack of beauty might as well be seen as after I had lived five years thy bride. Yet then thine oath came pouring like the rain, which all affirmed my face without compare, and that if thou mightst Doris's love obtain, for all the world besides thou didst not care. Then I was young and rich and nobly born, and therefore worthy to be Herod's mate. Yet thou ungrateful cast me off with scorn, when heaven's purpose raised your meaner fate. Oft have I begged for vengeance for this fact, and with dejected knees, aspiring hands, have prayed the highest power to enact the fall of her that on my trophy stands. Revenge I have according to my will, yet where I wished this vengeance did not light, I wished it should high-hearted Miriam kill, but it against my will home lord did fight. With thee, sweet boy, I came, and came to try, if thou before his bastards might be placed, in Harold's royal seat and dignity. But Miriam's infants here are only graced, and now for us there doth no hope remain, yet we will not return till Herod's end be more confirmed. Perchance he is not slain, so glorious fortunes may my boy attend, for if he live, he'll think it doth suffice that he to Doris shows such cruelty. For as he did my wretched life despise, so do I know I shall despise it die. Let him but prove as natural to thee as cruel to thy miserable mother. His cruelty shall not upbraided be, but in thy fortunes I his faults will smother. Each mouth within the city loudly cries that Herod's death is certain. Therefore we had best some subtle hidden plot devise, that Mariam's children might subverted be by poison's drink, or else by murderous knife. So we may be advanced, it skills not how. They are but bastards. You were Herod's wife, and foul adultery blotteth Mariam's brow. They are too strong to be by us removed, or else revenges foulest spotted face. By our detested wrongs might be approved, but weakness must to greater power give place. But let us now retire to grieve alone, for solitariness best fitteth moan. Exeunt. Scene four. Sileus and Constabarus. Well met, Judean lord, the only wine. Sileus wish to see. I am to call thy tongue to strict account. For what despite I ready am to hear and answer all. But if directly at the cause I guess that breeds this challenge, you must pardon me. And now some other ground of fight profess, for I have vowed, vows must unbroken be. What may be your exception? Let me know. Why aught concerning Salome? My sword shall not be wielded for a cause so low. A blow for her my arm will scorn to ford. It is for slandering her unspotted name, and I will make thee in thy vows despite. 
suck up the breath that did my mistress blame and swallow it again to do her right i prithee give some other quarrel ground to find beginning rail against my name or strike me first or let some scarlet wound inflame my courage give me words of shame do thou our moses sacred laws disgrace deprave our nation do me some despite i'm apt enough to fight in any case but yet for salome i will not fight not for i aught but salome my sword that owes his service to her sacred name will not an edge for other cause suffered in other fight i am not sure of fame for her i pity thee enough already for her i therefore will not mangle thee a woman with a heart so most unsteady will of herself sufficient torture be i cannot envy for so light a gain her mind with such unconstancy doth run as with a word thou didst her love obtain so with a word she will from thee be won so light as her possessions for most day is her affections lost to me tis known as good go hold the wind as make her stay she never loves but till she call her own she merely is a painted sepulchre that is both fair and vilely foul at once though on her outside graces garnish her her mind is filled with worse than rotten bones and ever ready lifted is her hand to aim destruction at a husband's throat for proofs josephus and myself do stand though once on both of us she seemed to dote her mouth though serpent-like it never hisses yet like a serpent poisons where it kisses well hebrew well thou barkst but wilt not bite i tell thee still for her i will not fight why then i call thee covered from my heart i give thee thanks a coward's hateful name cannot to valiant minds a blot impart and therefore i with joy receive the same thou knowest i am no coward thou wert by at the arabian battle the other day and saw'st my sword with daring valiancy among the faint arabians cut my way the blood of foes no more could let it shine and twas enamelled with some of thine but now have at thee not for salome i fight but to discharge a coward's style here gins the fight that shall not parted be before a soul or two endure exile they fight thy sword hath made some windows for my blood to show a horrid crimson physiognomy to breathe for both of us methinks were good the day will give us time enough to die with all my heart take breath thou shalt have time and if thou list a twelve month let us end into thy cheeks there doth a paleness climb thou canst not from my sword thyself defend what needest thou for salome to fight thou hast her and mayst keep her none strives for her i willingly to thee resign my right for in my very soul i do abhor her thou seest that i am fresh unwounded yet then not for fear i do this offer make thou art with loss of blood to fight unfit for here is one and, and there another take i will not leave as long as breath remains within my wounded body spare your words my heart and blood steed courage entertains salome's love no place for fear affords oh could thy soul but prophesy like mine i would not wonder thou shouldst long to die for salome if i a right divine will be then death a greater misery then list i will breathe no longer they fight do thy will i hateless fight and charitably kill ay ay pity thyself Soleus. let not death intrude before his time into thy heart alas it is too late to fear his breath is from his body now about to part how fairest thou brave arabian very well my leg is hurt i can no longer fight it only grieves me that so soon i fell before fair salome's wrongs i came to ride thy wounds are less than mortal never fear thou shalt a safe and quick recovery find come i will thee unto my lodging bear i hate thy body but i love thy mind thanks noble jew i see a courteous foe stern enmity to friendship can no art had not my heart and tongue engaged me so 
i would from thee no foe but friend depart my heart to salome is tied too fast to leave her love for friendship yet my skill shall be employed to make your favour last and i will honour constabarus still i open my bosom to thee and will take thee in as a friend and grieve for thy complaint but if we do not expedition make thy loss of blood i fear will make thee faint exeunt chorus to hear a tale with ears prejudicate it spoils the judgment and corrupts the sense that human error given to every state is greater enemy to innocence it makes us foolish heady rash unjust it makes us never try before we trust it will confound the meaning change the words for it our sense of hearing much deceives besides no time of judgment it affords to weigh the circumstance our ear receives the ground of accidents it never tries but makes us take for truth ten thousand lies our ears and hearts are apt to hold for good that we ourselves do most desire to be and then we drown objections in the flood of partiality tis that we see that makes false rumours long with credit past though they like rumours must conclude at last the greatest part of us prejudicate with wishing herod's death do hold it true the being once deluded doth not bait the credit to a better likelihood due those few that wish it not the multitude do carry headlong so they doubts conclude they not object the weak uncertain ground whereon they built this tale of herod's end whereof the author scarcely can be found and all because their wishes that way bend they think not of the peril that ensueth if this should prove the contrary to truth on this same doubt on this so light a breath they pawn their lives and fortunes for they all behaved them as the news of herod's death they did of most undoubted credit call but if their actions now do rightly hit let them commend their fortune not their wit end of act two act three of the tragedy of Marium. this librivox recording is in the public domain the tragedy of Marium, the fair queen of jewry by elizabeth carey act three scene one Ferroras, Salome. Urge me no more, Grafina, to forsake. Not twelve hours since I married her for love. And do you think a sister's power can make a resolute decree so soon remove? Poor minds they are that honour not affects. Who hunts for honour, happiness neglects. You might have been both of felicity and honour too, in equal measure seized. It is not you can tell so well as I what tis can make me happy or displeased to match for neither beauty nor respects one mean of birth but yet of meaner mind a woman full of natural defects i wonder what your eye in her could find mine eye found loveliness mine ear found wit to please the one and to enchant the other grace on her eye mirth on her tongue doth sit in looks a child in wisdom's house a mother but say you thought her fair as none thinks else knows not ferroras beauty is a blast much like this flower which to-day excels but longer than a day it will not last her wit exceeds her beauty wit may show the way to ill as well as good you know but wisdom is the porter of her head and bars all wicked words from issuing thence but of a porter better were you sped if she against their entrance made defence but wherefore comes the sacred ananel that hitherward his hasty steps doth bend 
great sacrificer here arrived well ill news from holy mouth i not attend scene two ferreras salome ananel my lips my son with peaceful tidings blessed shall utter honey to your listening ear a word of death comes not from priestly breast i speak of life in life there is no fear and for the news i did the heaven salute and filled the temple with my thankful voice for though that morning may not me pollute at pleasing accident i may rejoice is herod then revived from certain death what can your news restore my brother's breath both so and so the king is safe and sound and did such grace in royal caesar meet that he with larger style than ever crowned within this hour jerusalem will greet i did but come to tell you and must back to make preparatives for sacrifice i knew his death your hearts like mine did rack though to conceal it proved you wise exit how can my joy sufficiently appear a heavier tale did never pierce mine ear now salome of happiness may boast but now federus is in danger most i shall enjoy the comfort of my life and i shall lose it losing of my wife joy heart for constabarus shall be slain grieve so grafina shall from me be ta'en smile cheeks the fair Sileus shall be mine weep eyes for i must with a child combine well brother cease your moans on one condition i'll undertake to win the king's consent grafina still shall be in your tuition and her with you be ne'er the less content what's the condition let me quickly know that i as quickly your command may act were it to see what herbs on ophir grow or that the lofty tyrus might be sacked tis not so hard a task it is no more but tell the king that constabarus hid the sons of barbus done to death before and tis no more than constabarus did and tell him more that we for herod's sake not able to endure our brother's foe did with a bill our separation make though loath from constabarus else to go believe this tale foretold i'll go from hence in herod's ear the hebrew to deface and i that never studied eloquence do mean with eloquence this tale to grace exit this will be constabar's quick dispatch which from my mouth would lesser credit find yet shall he not decease without a match for Miriam shall not linger long behind first jealousy if that avail not fear shall be my minister to work her end a common error moves not herod's ear which doth so firmly to his Miriam bend she shall be charged with so horrid crime as herod's fear shall turn his love to hate i'll make some swear that she desires to climb and seeks to poison him for his estate i scorn that she should live my birth to upbraid to call me base and hungry edomite with patient show her collar i betrayed and watched the time to be revenged by slight now tongue of mine with scandal load her name turn hers to fountains herod's eyes to flame yet first i will begin ferreras's suit that he my earnest business may effect and i of Miriam will keep me mute till first some other doth her name detect who's there Sileus's man how fares your lord that your aspects do bear the badge of sorrow he hath the marks of constabarus's sword and for a while desires your sight to borrow my heavy curse the hateful sword pursue my heavier curse on the more hateful arm that wounded my Sileus. but renew your tale again hath he no mortal harm no sign of danger doth in him appear nor are his wounds in place of peril seen he bids you be assured you need not fear he hopes to make you yet arabia's queen oh commend my heart to be Sileus's charge 
tell him my brother's sudden coming now will give my foot no room to walk at large. But I will see him yet ere night, I vow. Exit. Scene three. Mariam, Sohemus. Sohemus, tell me what the news may be that makes your eyes so full, your cheeks so blue. I know not how to call them. Ill for me, tis sure they are. Not so, I hope, for you. Herod. But what of Herod? Herod lives. How? Lives? What, in some cave or forest hid? Nay, back returned with honour. Caesar gives him greater grace than e'er Antonius did. Foretell the ruin of my family. Tell me that I shall see our city burned. Tell me that I shall a death disgraceful die. But tell me not that Herod is returned. Be not impatient, madam, be but mild. His love to you again will soon be bred. I will not to his love be reconciled. With solemn vows I have forsworn his bed. But you must break those vows. I'll rather break the heart of Miriam. Cursed is my fate. But speak no more to me. In vain ye speak. To live with him I so profoundly hate. Great queen, you must to me your pardon give. So he must cannot now your will obey. If your command should me to silence drive, it were not to obey, but to betray. Reject and slight my speeches, mock my faith, scorn my observance, call my counsel naught, though you regard not what Sohema saith, yet will I ever freely speak my thought. I fear ere long I shall fair Mariam see in woeful state, and by herself undone. Yet for your issue's sake, more temperate be, the heart by affability is won. And must I to my prison turn again? Oh, now I see I was a hypocrite. I did this morning for his death complain, and yet do mourn because he lives ere night. When I his death believed, compassion wrought, and was the stickler twixt my heart and him. But now that curtain's drawn from off my thought, hate doth appear again with visage grim, and paint the face of Herod in my heart in horrid colours with detested look. Then fear would come, but scorn doth play her part, and saith that scorn with fear can never brook. I know I could unchain him with a smile, and lead him captive with a gentle word. I scorn my look should ever man beguile, or other speech than meaning to afford. Else Salome in vain might spend her wind, in vain might Herod's mother wet her tongue. In vain had they complotted and combined, for I could overthrow them all ere long. Oh, what a shelter is mine innocence, to shield me from the pangs of inward grief. Gainst all mishaps, it is my fair defence, and to my sorrows yields a large relief. To be commandress of the triple earth, and sit in safety from a fall secure, to have all nations celebrate my birth, I would not that my spirit were impure. Let my distressed state unpitied be. Mine innocence is hope enough for me. Exit. Poor guiltless queen. Oh, that my wish might place a little temper now about thy heart. Unbridled speech is Mariam's worst disgrace, and will endanger her without desert. I am in greater hazard. O'er my head the fatal axe doth hang unsteadily. My disobedience once discovered will shake it down, so he must so shall die. For when the king shall find we thought his death had been as certain as we see his life, and marks withal I slighted so his breath as to preserve alive his matchless wife, nay more to give to Alexander's hand the regal dignity, the sovereign power, how I had yielded up at her command the strength of all the city, David's tower? What more than common death may I expect, since I too well do know his cruelty? To a death a word of Herod's to neglect, what then to do directly contrary? Yet, life, I quit thee with a willing spirit, and think thou couldst not better be employed. I forfeit thee for her that more doth merit, ten such were better dead than she destroyed. But fare thee well, chaste queen, 
Well may I see the darkness palpable and rivers part, the sun stand still, nay more retorted be, but never woman with so pure a heart. Thine eye's grave majesty keeps all in awe, and cuts the wings of every loose desire. Thy brow is table to the modest law, yet though we dare not love, we may admire. And if I die, it shall my soul content, my breath in Mariam's service shall be spent. Chorus Tis not enough for one that is a wife, to keep her spotless from an act of ill, but from suspicion she should free her life, and bear herself of power as well as will. Tis not so glorious for her to be free, as by her proper self restrained to be. When she hath spacious ground to walk upon, why on the ridge should she desire to go? It is no glory to forbear alone those things that may her honour overthrow. But tis thankworthy if she will not take all lawful liberties for honour's sake. That wife her hand against her fame doth rear, that more than to her lord alone will give a private word to any second ear, and though she may with reputation live, yet though most chaste, she doth her glory blot, and wounds her honour, though she kills it not. When to their husbands they themselves do bind, do they not wholly give themselves away? Or give they but their body, not their mind, reserving that, though best, for others' prey? No sure, their thoughts no more can be their own, and therefore should to none but one be known. Then she usurps upon another's right, that seeks to be by public language graced, and though her thoughts reflect with purest light, her mind, if not peculiar, is not chaste. For in a wife it is no worse to find a common body than a common mind. And every mind, though free from thought of ill, that out of glory seeks a worth to show, when any's ears but one therewith they fill, doth in a sort her pureness overthrow. Now Mariam had, but that to this she bent, being free from fear as well as innocent. End of Act Three Act Four of the Tragedy of Mariam. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tragedy of Mariam, the Fair Queen of Jewry, by Elizabeth Carey. Act Four, Scene One. Enter Herod and his attendants. Hail, happy city, happy in thy store, and happy that thy buildings such we see, more happy in the temple where we adore but most of all that Miriam lives in thee. Enter Nuntio. Art thou returned? How fares my Miriam? She's well, my lord, and will anon be here as you commanded. Muffle up thy brow, thou day's dark taper. Miriam will appear, and where she shines we need not thy dim light. O oh, haste thy steps, rare creature, speed thy pace, and let thy presence make the day more bright and cheer the heart of Herod with thy face. It is an age since I from Miriam went. Methinks our parting was in David's days. The hours are so increased by discontent. Deep sorrow, Joshua like, the season stays. But when I am with Miriam, time runs on her sight can make months minutes days of weeks and hour is then no sooner come than gone when in her face mine eye for wonders seeks you world commanding city europe's grace twice hath my curious eye your streets surveyed i have seen the statue filled place that once if not for geese had been betrayed i all your roman beauties have beheld and seen the shows your aediles did prepare i saw the sum of what in you excelled yet saw no miracle like Miriam rare 
the fair and famous livia caesar's love the world's commanding mistress did i see whose beauties both the world and rome approve yet Miriam, livia is not like to thee be patient but a little while mine eyes within your compassed limits be contained that object straight shall your desires suffice from which you were so long a while restrained how wisely Miriam doth the time delay lest sudden joy my sense should suffocate i am prepared thou need'st no longer stay who's there my Miriam, more than happy fate oh no it is ferrerus welcome brother now for a while i must my passion smother scene two herod ferrerus all health and safety wait upon my lord and may you long and prosperous fortunes live with rome commanding caesar at accord and have all honours that the world can give o oh, brother now thou speakest not from thy heart no thou hast struck a blow at herod's love that cannot quickly from my memory part though salome did me to pardon move valiant phasaelus now to thee farewell thou wert my kind and honourable brother o hapless hour when you self-stricken fell thou father's image glory of thy mother had i desired a greater suit of thee than to withhold thee from a harlot's bed thou wouldst have granted it but now i see all are not like that in a womb are bred thou wouldst not hadst thou heard of herod's death have made his burial time thy bridal hour thou wouldst with clamours not with joyful breath have showed the news to be not sweet but sour Phasaleus great worth i know did stain ferrerus petty valour but they lie excepting you yourself that dare maintain that he did honour herod more than i for what i showed love's power constrained me show and pardon loving faults for Mariam's sake Mariam, where is she nay i do not know but absent use of her fair name i make you have forgiven greater faults than this for constabarus that against your will preserved the sons of barbus lives in bliss though you commanded him the youth to kill go take a present order for his death and let those traitors feel the worst of fears now salome will whine to beg his breath but i'll be deaf to prayers and blind to tears he is my lord from salome divorced though her affection did to leave him grieve yet was she by her love to you enforced to leave the man that would your foes relieve then haste them to their death exit ferrerus i will requite thee gentle Miriam. salome i mean the thought of Miriam doth so steal my spirit my mouth from speech of her i cannot wean scene three herod Miriam. and here she comes indeed happily met my best and dearest half what ails my dear thou dost the difference certainly forget twixt dusky habits and a time so clear my lord i suit my garment to my mind and there no cheerful colours can i find is this my welcome have i longed so much to see my dearest Miriam discontent what is it that is the cause thy heart to touch o oh, speak that i thy sorrow may prevent art thou not jury's queen and herod's too be my commandress be my sovereign guide to be by thee directed i will woo for in thy pleasure lies my highest pride or if thou think judea's narrow bound too strict a limit for thy great command thou shalt be empress of arabia crowned for thou shalt rule and i will win the land i'll rob the holy david's sepulchre to give thee wealth if thou for wealth do care thou shalt have all they did with him in ter and i for thee will make the temple bare i neither have of power nor riches want i have enough nor do i wish for more your offers to my heart no ease can grant except they could my brother's life restore no had you wished the wretched Miriam glad or had your love to her been truly tied 
nay had you not desired to make her sad my brother nor my grandsire had not died wilt thou believe no oaths to clear thy lord how oft have i with execration sworn thou art by me beloved by me adored yet are my protestations heard with scorn hyrcanus plotted to deprive my head of this long settled honour that i wear and therefore i did justly doom him dead to rid the realm from peril me from fear yet i for Miriam's sake do so repent the death of one whose blood she did inherit i wish i had a kingdom's treasure spent so i had ne'er expelled her canis spirit as i affected that same noble youth in lasting infamy my name enroll if i not mourned his death with hearty truth did i not show to him my earnest love when i to him the priesthood did restore and did for him a living priest remove which never had been done but once before i know that moved by importunity you made him priest and shortly after die i will not speak unless to be believed this froward humour will not do you good it hath too much already herod grieved to think that you on terms of hate have stood yet smile my dearest Miriam, do but smile and i will all unkind conceits exile i cannot frame disguise nor never taught my face a look dissenting from my thought by heaven you vex me build not on my love i will not build on so unstable ground naught is so fixed but peevishness may move tis better slightest cause than none were found be judge yourself if ever herod sought or would be moved a cause of change to find yet let your look declare a milder thought my heart again you shall to Miriam bind how oft did i for you my mother chide revile my sister and my brother rate and tell them all my Miriam they belied distrust me still if these be signs of hate scene four enter butler what hast thou here a drink procuring love the queen desired me to deliver it did i some hateful practice this will prove yet it can be no worse than heavens permit herod to the butler confess the truth thou wicked instrument to her outrageous will tis poison sure tell true and thou shalt scape the punishment which if thou do conceal thou shalt endure i know not but i doubt it be no less long since the hate of you her heart did seize knowest thou the cause thereof my lord i guess so hemus told the tale that did displease oh heaven so hemus false go let him die stay not to suffer him to speak a word exit butler oh damned villain did he falsify the oath he swore even of his own accord now do i know thy falsehood painted devil thou white enchantress oh thou art so foul that hyssop cannot cleanse thee worst of evil a beauteous body hides a loathsome soul your love so hemus moved by his affection though he have ever heretofore been true did blab forsooth that i did give direction if we were put to death to slaughter you and you in black revenge attended now to add a murder to your breach of vow is this a dream oh heaven that twere no more i'll give my realm to who can prove it so i would i were like any beggar poor so i for false my Miriam did not know foul pith contained in the fairest rind that ever graded a cedar oh thine eye is pure as heaven but impure thy mind and for impurity shall Miriam die why didst thou love so hemus they can tell that say i loved him Miriam says not so oh cannot impudence the coals expel that for thy love in herod's bosom glow it is as plain as water and denial makes of thy falsehood but a greater trial 
hast thou beheld thyself and couldst thou stain so rare perfection even for love of thee i do profoundly hate thee wert thou plain thou shouldst the wonder of judea be but oh thou art not hell itself lies hid beneath thy heavenly show yet never wert thou chaste thou mightst exalt pull down command forbid and be above the wheel of fortune placed hadst thou complotted herod's massacre that so thy son a monarch might be styled not half so grievous such an action were as once to think that marian is defiled bright workmanship of nature sullied o'er with pitched darkness now thine end shall be thou shalt not live fair fiend to cousin more with heavenly semblance as thou cousinst me yet must i love thee in despite of death and thou shalt die in the despite of love for neither shall my love prolong thy breath nor shall thy loss of breath my love remove i might have seen thy falsehood in thy face where couldst thou get thy stars that served for eyes except by theft and theft is foul disgrace this had appeared before were herod wise but i'm a sot a very sot no better my wisdom long ago a wandering fell thy face encountering it my wit did fetter and made me for delight my freedom sell give me my heart false creature tis a wrong my guiltless heart should now with thine be slain thou hadst no right to lock it up so long and with usurper's name i Maryam stain enter butler have you designed so hemus to his end i have my lord then call our royal guard to do as much for Maryam exit butler they offend leave ill unblamed or good without reward enter soldiers here take her to her death come back come back what meant i to deprive the world of light to muffle jewry in the foulest black that ever was an opposite to white why whither would you carry her you bade we should conduct her to her death my lord why sure i did not herod was not mad why should she feel the fury of the sword oh now the grief returns into my heart and pulls me piecemeal love and hate do fight and now hath love acquired the greater part yet now hath hate affection conquered quite and therefore bear her hence and hebrew why seize you with lion's paws the fairest lamb of all the flock she must not shall not die without her i most miserable am and with her more than most away away but bear her but to prison not to death and is she gone indeed stay villain stay her looks alone preserved your sovereign's breath well let her go but yet she shall not die i cannot think she meant to poison me but certain tis she lived too wantonly and therefore shall she never more be free Accent. scene five foul villain can thy pitchy coloured soul permit thine ear to hear her causeless doom and not enforce thy tongue that tale control that must unjustly bring her to her tomb o oh, salome thou hast thyself repaid for all the benefits that thou hast done thou art the cause i have the queen betrayed thou hast my heart to darkest falsehood won i am condemned 
heaven gave me not my tongue to slander innocence to lie deceive to be the hateful instrument to wrong the earth of greater glory to bereave my sin ascends and doth to heaven cry it is the blackest deed that ever was and there doth sit an angel notary that doth record it down in leaves of brass oh how my heart doth quake Achitophel, thou founds a mean thyself from shame to free, and sure my soul approves thou didst not well. All follow some, and I will follow thee. Exit. Scene six. Constabarus, Babas's sons, and their guard. Now here we step out last, the way to death. We must not tread this way a second time. Yet let us resolutely yield our breath. Death is the only ladder, heaven to climb. With willing mind I could myself resign, But yet it grieves me with a grief untold. Our death should be accompanied with thine, Our friendship we to thee have dearly sold. Still wilt thou wrong the sacred name of friend? Then shouldst thou never style it friendship more, But base mechanic traffic that doth lend yet will be sure they shall the debt restore. I could with needless compliment return, tis for thy ceremony, I could say, tis I that made the fire your house to burn, for but for me she would not you betray. Had not the damned woman sought mine end, you had not been the subject of her hate, you never did her hateful mind offend, nor could your deaths have freed her nuptial fate. Therefore, fair friends, Though you were still unborn, some other subtlety devised should be, Whereby my life, though guiltless, should be torn. Thus have I proved tis you that die for me, And therefore should I weakly now lament, You have but done your duties. Friends should die alone their friend's disaster to prevent, Though not compelled by strong necessity. But now farewell, fair city. Nevermore shall I behold your beauty shining bright. Farewell of Jewish men, the worthy store, But no farewell to any female white. You wavering crew, my curse to you I leave. You had but one to give you any grace, And you yourselves will Miriam's life bereave. Your commonwealth doth innocency chase, you creatures made to be the human curse, you tigers, lionesses, hungry bears, terror massacring hyenas, nay, far worse, for they for prey do shed their fainted tears, but you will weep, you creatures cross to good, for your unquenched thirst of human blood. You were the angels cast from heaven for pride, and still do keep your angels outward show but none of you are inly beautified for still your heaven depriving pride doth grow did not the sins of man require a scourge your place on earth had been by this withstood but since a flood no more the world must purge you stayed in office of a second flood you giddy creatures sowers of debate you'll love to-day and for no other cause but for you yesterday did deeply hate. You are the wreck of order, breach of laws. Your best are foolish, froward, wanton, vain. Your worst, adulterous, murderous, cunning, proud. And Salome attends the latter train, or rather she their leader is allowed. I do the sottishness of men bewail, That do with following you enhance your pride. T'were better that the human race should fail Than be by such a mischief multiplied. Cham's servile curse to all your sex was given, Because in paradise you did offend. Then do we not resist the will of heaven When on your wills like servants we attend? You are to nothing, constant but to ill. You are with naught but wickedness endued. Your loves are set on nothing but your will. And thus 
my censure i of you conclude you are the least of goods the worst of evils your best are worse than men your worst than devils come let us to our death are we not blessed our death will freedom from these creatures give those trouble quiet sowers of unrest and this i vow that had i leave to live i would for ever lead a single life and never venture on a devilish wife exeunt scene seven herod and salome nay she shall die die quoth you that she shall but for the means the means methinks tis hard to find a means to murder her withal therefore i am resolved she shall be spared why let her be beheaded that were well think you that swords are miracles like you her skin will every curtilax edge refell and then your enterprise you well may rue what if the fierce arabian notice take of this your wretched weaponless estate they answer when we bid resistance make that Miriam's skin their falchions did rebate beware of this you make a goodly hand if you of weapons do deprive our land why drown her then indeed a sweet device Ay, would not every river turn her course rather than do her beauty prejudice and be reverted to the proper source so not a drop of water should be found in all judea's quondam fertile land then let the fire devour her twill not be flame is from her derived into my heart thou nursest flame flame will not murder thee my fairest Miriam, fullest of desert then let her live for me nay she shall die but can you live without her doubt you that i am sure i cannot i beseech you try i have experience but i know not what how should i try why let my love be slain but if we cannot live without her sight you will find the means to make her breathe again or else you will bereave my comfort quite oh i i warrant you exit what is she gone and gone to bid the world be overthrown what is her heart's composure hardest stone to what a pass are cruel women grown re-enter salome she is returned already have you done is it possible you can command so soon a creature's heart to quench the flaming sun or from the sky to wipe away the moon if Miriam be the sun and moon it is for i already have commanded this but have you seen her cheek a thousand times but did you mark it too ay very well what is it a crimson bush that ever limes the soul whose foresight doth not much excel send word she shall not die her cheek a bush nay then i see indeed you marked it not tis very fair but yet will never blush though foul dishonours do her forehead blot then let her die tis very true indeed and for this fault alone shall Miriam bleed what fault my lord what fault is it you that ask if you be ignorant i know of none to call her back from death shall be your task i'm glad that she for innocent is known for on the brow of Miriam hangs a fleece whose slenderest twine is strong enough to bind the hearts of kings the pride and shame of greece troy flaming helens not so fairly shined tis true indeed she lays them out for nets to catch the hearts that do not shun a bait tis time to speak for herod sure forgets that Miriam's very tresses hide deceit oh do they so 
nay then you do but well in sooth i thought it had been hair nets call you them lord how they do excel i never saw a net that showed so fair but have you heard her speak you know i have and were you not amazed no not a whit then twas not her you heard her life i'll save for Miriam hath a world amazing wit she speaks a beauteous language but within her heart is false as powder and her tongue doth but allure the auditors to sin and is the instrument to do you wrong it may be so nay tis so she's unchaste her mouth will ope to every stranger's ear then let the executioner make haste lest she enchant him if her words he hear let him be deaf lest she do him surprise that shall to free her spirit be assigned yet what boots deafness if he have his eyes her murderer must be both deaf and blind for if he see he needs must see the stars that shine on either side of Miriam's face whose sweet aspect will terminate the wars wherewith he should a soul so precious chase her eyes can speak and in their speaking move oft did my heart with reverence receive the world's mandates pretty tales of love they utter which can human bondage weave but shall i let this heaven's model die which for a small self-portraiture she drew her eyes like stars her forehead like the sky she is like heaven and must be heavenly true your thoughts do rave with doting on the queen her eyes are ebon-hued and you'll confess a sable star hath been but seldom seen then speak of reason more of Miriam less yourself are held a goodly creature here yet so unlike my Miriam in your shape that when to her you have approached near myself hath often ta'en you for an ape and yet you prate of beauty go your ways you are to her a sunburnt blackamoor your paintings cannot equal Miriam's praise her nature is so rich you are so poor let her be stayed from death for if she die we do we know not what to stop her breath a world cannot another Miriam buy why say you lingering countermand her death then you'll no more remember what hath passed so he misses love and hers shall be forgot tis well in truth that fault may be her last and she may mend though yet she love you not oh god tis true so he must, earth and heaven why did you both conspire to make me cursed in cozening me with shows and proofs uneven she showed the best and yet did prove the worst her show was such as had our singing king the holy david Miriam's beauty seen the hittite had then felt no deadly sting nor bethsabe had never been a queen or had his son the wisest man of men whose fond delight did most consist in change beheld her face he had been stayed again no creature having her can wish to range had assuerus seen my Miriam's brow the humble jew she might have walked alone her beauteous virtue should have stayed below whilst Miriam mounted to the persian throne but what avails it all for in the weight she is deceitful light as vanity oh she was made for nothing but a bait to train some hapless man to misery i am the hapless man that have been trained to endless bondage i will see her yet methinks i should discern her if she feigned can human eyes be dazed by woman's wit once more these eyes of mine with hers shall meet before the headsman do her life bereave 
shall i for ever part from thee my sweet without the taking of my latest leave you had as good resolve to save her now i'll stay her death tis well determined for sure she never more will break her vow so hemus and josephus both are dead she shall not live nor will i see her face a long healed wound a second time doth bleed with joseph i remember her disgrace a shameful end ensues a shameful deed oh that i had not called to mind anew the discontent of Miriam's wavering heart twas you you foul-mouthed ate none but you that did the thought hereof to me impart hence from my sight my black tormentor hence for hadst not thou made herod unsecure i had not doubted Miriam's innocence but still had held her in my heart for pure i'll leave you to your passion tis no crime to purge me now though of a guiltless crime exit destruction take thee thou hast made my heart as heavy as revenge i am so dull methinks i am not sensible of smart though hideous horrors at my bosom pull my head weighs downwards therefore will i go to try if i can sleep away my woe exit scene eight am i the Miriam that presumed so much and deemed my face must needs preserve my breath i i it was that thought my beauty such as it alone could countermand my death now death will teach me he can pale as well a cheek of roses as a cheek less bright and dim an eye who shine doth most excel as soon as one that casts a meaner light had not myself against myself conspired no plot no adversary from without could herod's love from Miriam have retired or from his heart have thrust my semblance out the wanton queen that never loved for love false cleopatra wholly set on gain with all her slights did prove yet vainly prove for her the love of herod to obtain yet her allurements all her courtly guile her smiles her favours and her smooth deceit could not my face from herod's mind exile but were with him of less than little weight that face and person that in asia late for beauty's goddess paphos queen was ta'en that face that did captive great julius fate that very face that was antonius bane that face that to be egypt's pride was born that face that all the world esteemed so rare did herod hate despise neglect and scorn when with the same he Miriam's did compare this made that i improvidently wrought and on the wager even my life did pawn because i thought and yet but truly thought that herod's love could not from me be drawn but now though out of time i plainly see it could be drawn though never drawn from me had i but with humility been graced as well as fair i might have proved me wise but i did think because i knew me chaste one virtue for a woman might suffice that mind for glory of our sex might stand wherein humility and chastity doth march with equal paces hand in hand but one if single seen who setteth by and i had singly one but tis my joy that ever i was innocent though sour and therefore they can but my life destroy my soul is free from adversary's power your princes great in power and high in birth be it great and high i envy not your hap your birth must be from dust your power on earth in heaven shall Miriam sit in sarah's lap i heaven your beauty cannot bring you thither your soul is black and spotted full of sin you in adultery live nine year together and heaven will never let adultery in
what are thou that dost poor Marian pursue? Some spirit sent to drive me to despair. Who sees for truth that Marian is untrue? If fair she be, she is as chaste as fair. I am that Doris that was once beloved, beloved by Herod, Herod's lawful wife. Twas you that Doris from his side removed, and robbed me from the glory of my life. Was that adultery? Did not Moses say that he that being matched to deadly hate might by permission put his wife away and take a more beloved to be his mate? What did he hate me for? For simple truth? For bringing beauteous babes for love to him? For riches, noble birth, or tender youth? Or for no stain did Doris's honor dim? Oh, tell me, Miriam, tell me if you know which fault of these made Herod Doris's foe. These thrice three years have I with hands held up, and bowed knees fast nailed to the ground, besought for thee the dregs of that same cup, that cup of wrath that is for sinners found, and now thou art to drink it, Doris's curse, upon thyself did all this while attend, but now it shall pursue thy children worse. O oh, Doris, now to thee my knees I bend, that heart that never bowed to thee doth bow, curse not mine infants let it be suffice that heaven doth punishment to me allow thy curse is cause that guiltless mariam dies had i ten thousand tongues and every tongue inflamed with poison's power and steeped in gall my curses would not answer for my wrong though i in cursing thee employed them all hear thou that didst mount gerizim command to be a place whereon with cause to curse stretch thy revenging arm thrust force thy hand and plague the mother much, the children worse. Throw flaming fire upon the base-born heads that were begotten in unlawful beds, but let them live till they have sense to know what tis to be in miserable state, then be their nearest friends their overthrow, attended be they by suspicious hate. And, Miriam, I do hope this boy of mine shall one day come to be the death of thine. Exit. Oh, heaven forbid! I hope the world shall see this curse of thine shall be returned on thee. Now, earth, farewell. Though I be yet but young, yet I, methinks, have known thee too, too long. Exit. Chorus. The fairest action of our human life is scorning to revenge an injury for who forgives without a further strife his adversary's heart to him doth tie and tis a firmer conquest truly said to win the heart than overthrow the head if we a worthy enemy do find to yield to worth it must be nobly done but if of baser metal be his mind in base revenge there is no honour won who would a worthy courage overthrow, and who would wrestle with a worthless foe? We say our hearts are great and cannot yield. Because they cannot yield, it proves them poor. Great hearts are tasked beyond their power but seld. The weakest lion will the loudest roar. Truth school for certain doth this same allow. High-heartedness doth sometimes teach to bow. A noble heart doth teach a virtuous scorn, to scorn to owe a duty over long, to scorn to be for benefits forborn, to scorn to lie, to scorn to do a wrong, to scorn to bear an injury in mind, to scorn a free-born heart slave-like to bind. But if for wrongs we needs revenge must have, Then be our vengeance of the noblest kind. Do we his body from a fury save, And let our hate prevail against our mind? What can gainst him a greater vengeance be Than make his foe more worthy far than he? Had Mariam scorned to leave a Jew unpaid, She would to Herod then have paid her love and not have been by sullen passion swayed to fix her thoughts all injury above is virtuous pride 
had marion thus been proved long famous life to her had been allowed end of act four Act V of the Tragedy of Merriam. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tragedy of Merriam, The Fair Queen of Jewry, by Elizabeth Carey. Act V, Scene One. When, sweetest friend, should I so far offend your heavenly self, that you my fault to quit have made me now relater of your end, the end of beauty, chastity, and wit? was none so hapless in the fatal place but i most wretched for the queen to choose tis certain i have some ill-boding face that made me culled to tell this luckless news and yet no news to herod were it new to him unhappy it had not been at all yet do i long to come within his view that he may know his wife did guiltless fall and here he comes your mariam greets you well enter herod what lives my mariam joy exceeding joy she shall not die heaven doth your will repel oh do not with thy words my life destroy i prithee tell no dying tale thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too too much yet let thy tongue's addition make me die death welcome comes to him whose grief is such i went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best to see if death had heart to make her stoop to see the sun admiring phoenix's nest when there i came upon the way i saw the stately mariam not debased by fear her look did seem to keep the world in awe, yet mildly did her face this fortune bear. Thou dost usurp my right. My tongue was framed to be the instrument of Miriam's praise. Yet, speak, she cannot be too often famed. All tongues suffice not her sweet name to raise. But as she came, she Alexandra met, who did her death, sweet queen, no wit bewail but as if nature she did quite forget she did upon her daughter loudly rail why stopped you not her mouth where had she words to darken that that heaven made so bright our sacred tongue no epithet affords to call her other than the world's delight she told her that her death was too too good and that already she had lived too long she said she shamed to have a part in blood of her that did the princely herod wrong base pick thank devil shame twas all her glory that she to noble mariam was the mother but never shall it live in any story her name except to infamy i'll smother what answer did her princely daughter make she made no answer but she looked the while as if thereof she scarce did notice take yet smiled a dutiful though scornful smile sweet creature i that look to mind do call full oft hath herod been amazed withal go on she came unmoved with pleasant grace as if to triumph her arrival were in stately habit and with cheerful face yet every eye was moist but mariam's there when justly opposite to me she came she picked me out from all the crew she beckoned to me called me by my name for she my name my birth and fortune knew what did she name thee happy happy man wilt thou not ever love that name the better but what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine ear tell all omit no letter tell thou my lord said she me meant she me is it true the more my shame i was her lord were i not mad her lord i still should be 
but now her name must be by me adored oh say what said she more each word she said shall be the food whereon my heart is fed tell thou my lord thou saw'st me lose my breath oh that i could that sentence now control if guiltily eternal be my death i hold her chaste even in my inmost soul by three days hence if wishes could revive i know himself would make me oft alive three days three hours three minutes not so much a minute in a thousand parts divided my penitency for her death is such as in the first i wished she had not died but forward in thy tale why on she went and after she some silent prayer had said she died as if to die she were content and thus to heaven her heavenly soul is fled but art thou sure there doth no life remain is it possible my Miriam should be dead is there no trick to make her breathe again her body is divided from her head why yet methinks there might be found by art strange ways of cure tis sure rare things are done by an inventive head and willing heart let not my lord your fancies idly run it is as possible it should be seen that we should make the holy abraham live though he entombed two thousand years had been as breath again to slaughtered mariam give but now for more assaults prepare your ears there cannot be a further cause of moan this accident shall shelter me from fears what can i fear already Miriam's gone yet tell even what you will as i came by from Miriam's death i saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie which cord he had designed his end to be when me he once discerned he downwards bowed and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud go tell the king he trusted ere he tried i am the cause that mariam causeless died damnation take him for it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life that she the crown might have which tale did mariam from herself divorce oh pardon me thou pure unspotted ghost my punishment must needs sufficient be in missing that content i valued most which was thy admirable face to see i had but one inestimable jewel yet one i had no monarch had the like and therefore may i curse myself as cruel was broken by a blow myself did strike i gazed thereon and never thought me blest but when on it my dazzled eye might rest a precious mirror made by wondrous art i prized it ten times dearer than my crown and laid it up fast folded in my heart yet i in sudden choler cast it down and pashed it all to pieces twas no foe that robbed me of it no arabian host nor no armenian guide hath used me so but herod's wretched self hath herod crossed she was my graceful moiety me accursed to slay my better half and save my worst but sure she is not dead you did but jest to put me in perplexity a while twere well indeed if i could so be dressed i see she is alive methinks you smile if sainted abel yet deceased be tis certain mariam is as dead as he why then go call her to me bid her now put on fair habit stately ornament and let no frown or shade her smoothest brow in her doth herod place his whole content she's come in state weeds to please your sense if now she come attired in robe of heaven remember you yourself did send her hence and now to you she can no more be given she's dead hell take her murderers she was fair oh what a hand she had 
it was so white it did the whiteness of the snow impair i never more shall see so sweet a sight tis true her hand was rare her hand her hands she had not singly one of beauty rare but such a pair as here where herod stands he dares the world to make to both compare accursed salome hadst thou been still my miriam had been breathing by my side oh never had i had i had my will sent forth command that miriam should have died but salome thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex upon your sex's forehead miriam sat to grace you all like an imperial crown but you fond fool have rudely pushed thereat and proudly pulled your proper glory down one smile of hers nay not so much a look was worth a hundred thousand such as you judea how canst thou the wretches brook that robbed from thee the fairest of the crew you dwellers in the now deprived land wherein the matchless Miriam was bred why grasp not each of you a sword in hand to aim at me your cruel sovereign's head oh when you think of herod as your king and owner of the pride of palestine this act to your remembrance likewise bring tis i have overthrown your royal line within her purer veins the blood did run that from her grandam sarah she derived whose beldame age the love of kings hath won oh that her issue had as long been lived but can her eye be made by death obscure i cannot think but it must sparkle still foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill i am the villain that have done the deed the cruel deed though by another's hand my word though not my sword made Miriam bleed her canis grandchild died at my command that Marian that i once did love so dear the partner of my now detested bed why shine you sun with an aspect so clear i tell you once again my Marian's dead you could but shine if some egyptian blouse or ethiopian dowdy lose her life this was then wherefore bend you not your brows the king of jewry's fair and spotless wife deny thy beams and moon refuse thy light let all the stars be dark let jewry's eye no more distinguish which is day and night since her best birth did in her bosom die those fond idolaters the men of greece maintain these orbs are safely governed that each within themselves have gods apiece by whom their steadfast course is justly led but were it so as so it cannot be they all would put their mourning garments on not one of them would yield a light to me to me that is the cause that Marian's gone for though they feign their saturn melancholy of sour behaviours and of angry mood they feign him likewise to be just and holy and justice needs must seek revenge for blood their jove if jove he were would sure desire to punish him that slew so fair a lass for leda's beauty set his heart on fire yet she not half so fair as Miriam was and mars would deem his venus had been slain saul to recover her would never stick for if he want the power her life to gain then physic's god is but an empiric 
the queen of love would storm for beauty's sake and hermes too since he bestowed her wet the night's pale light for angry grief would shake to see chaste Miriam die in age unfit but oh i am deceived she passed them all in every gift in every property her excellencies wrought her timeless fall and they rejoiced not grieved to see her die the paphian goddess did repent her waste when she to one such beauty did allow mercurius thought her wit his wit surpassed and cynthia envied Miriam's brighter brow but these are fictions they are devoid of sense the greeks but dream and dreaming falsehoods tell they neither can offend nor give defence and not by them it was my Miriam fell if she had been like an egyptian black and not so fair she had been longer lived her overflow of beauty turned back and drowned the spring from whence it was derived her heavenly beauty twas that made me think that it with chastity could never dwell but now i see that heaven in her did link a spirit and a person to excel i'll muffle up myself in endless night and never let mine eyes behold the light retire thyself vile monster worse than he that stained the virgin earth with brother's blood still in some vault or den enclosed be where with thy tears thou mayest beget a flood which flood in time may drown thee happy day when thou at once shalt die and find a grave a stone upon the vault some one shall lay which monument shall an inscription have and these shall be the words it shall contain here herod lies that hath his Miriam slain exit chorus whoever hath beheld with steadfast eye the strange events of this one only day how many were deceived how many die that once to-day did grounds for safety lay it will from them all certainty bereave since twice six hours so many can deceive this morning herod held for surely dead and all the jews on mariam did attend and constiburus rise from salome's bed and neither dreamed of a divorce or end ferorus joyed that he might have his wife and babas sons for safety of their life to-night our herod doth alive remain the guiltless mariam is deprived of breath stout constabarus both divorced and slain the valiant sons of babas have their death ferora sure is love to be bereft if salome her suit unmade had left herod this morning did expect with joy to see his mariam's much beloved face and yet ere night he did her life destroy and surely thought she did her name disgrace yet now again so short do humours last he both repents her death and knows her chaste had he with wisdom now her death delayed he at his pleasure might command her death but now he hath his power so much betrayed as all his woes cannot restore her breath now doth he strangely lunatically rave because his mariam's life he cannot save this day's events were certainly ordained to be the warning to posterity so many changes are therein contained so admirably strange variety this day alone our sagest hebrews shall in after times 
the school of wisdom call end of act five end of the tragedy of Miriam by elizabeth carey